ending up. I told you he'll move if he yawns a lot. And there we go. He's now going to start slinking off into the darkness that is the night. So he's not going up towards the tree, which means we'll probably end up leaving him in this area and, and letting him slink off down into the drainage and try to see if we can go and catch up with those lions that are not lying too far away from us. Olivia, you want to know if this leopard has found a mate. Olivia, no, not yet, because he's too young. So this leopard is only now, he's just under two, well, he's about just over a year and a half old. So he's not very old at all. Male leopards will only find a mate generally when they're four or five years old. Sometimes a little bit earlier, but most of the time four or five years old is when a leopard finds a mate. Whereas this guy is still a little bit too young so he's going to have to wait for a bit he has to grow up he has to get bigger he's still a little small to be trying to mate with the females so it's going to be a while now look he's coming to the tree i wonder is he going to go up the tree for us i hope he's going to go up the tree it looks like he's going towards it there we go you see he's looking You'll see how quickly he'll go up. It's amazing to watch when the cats jump into these trees. They are so athletic, and the leopard has so much power, it'll be very quick. Yeah, I think he's going to go. Look, there we go. Up he goes, and into the tree. How cool is that? So it's always one thing to see a leopard. Oh, and up he goes to the carcass. So there is where the kill is, and that's what he's going to try and now start feeding on. Isn't this cool? <laughs> Reese, you want to know how long the food will last him in the tree? Do you see how he's easily able to move in the trees? This is what makes leopards so special. He's unlike the other cats that really struggle in the trees and can't climb very well. Leopards are completely at home, and look at how he's able to move around. It really is amazing. Now, Reese, the tree, the carcass will last probably. I mean, this carcass has lasted now just over 36 hours that he's had it. So it will probably last the night. And by tomorrow morning, most of that will be gone. But then he's got another carcass. And that's why they put it in the tree. Because it's going to last longer. Because he doesn't have to worry about fighting hyenas up in the tree. And look, he's now sitting right at the carcass, getting comfy so that he can start eating. Or just to protect it and lie on his carcass. Because when you have a food, sometimes you have to sleep on it if you're a leopard. To make sure everybody knows that it's yours. So he's actually sleeping on the meat at the moment which is not going to be very nice because he's going to be a bit stinky later but i suppose he's just showing everybody that this is a carcass look he's watching i think maybe a hyena is coming this way because there was a hyena behind us and he's looking behind me so maybe the hyena is coming I said can you see a hyena behind us yes there's the hyena behind us yeah, the hyena is going to come now now so hopefully we will see it A young hyena that we've got behind us so that's why was the leopard in the tree is watching so carefully but the problem is is it's right behind where Sebastian is so there you can see the hyena behind the car so I apologize about the antenna because unfortunately that's how we send our signal to all of you but there we go there's our hyena so you see look look at how it's built it's very different to the leopard you see it's got a angled back not straight back like the leopard it does have spots the same way but it has a very powerful head and that angled back is because hyenas are scavengers a lot and when they do hunt they try and chase animals for long periods of time they don't have a short burst of speed like the leopard does and so that's why they have a very different back structure to what the leopard does wow well we're going to sit here and just enjoy our beautiful leopard sitting on top of his carcass and we're probably then going to try and see if we can go and find those lions with the big male for all of you and while we do that let's go across to Taylor who's still sitting with her lions and hopefully her lions are going to decide to get up and move around and maybe head towards those buffalo in the distance where she is let me reposition quickly i think what i'm going to do i'm not going to turn my lights on i'm going to stay in the complete darkness we'll find that lioness now what i want to do is i want to put get a better view of you know, i'm gonna have to use my spotlight just to shine a little bit i'm not shining on the lions i don't want to put my big brights on what i'm going to do is i'm going to turn us so that we're behind the lions and that we'll be able to see the zebras just behind them. I'm also going to scan for this lioness. Now, 
question from David. You're wondering if the Lionesses would reprimand the Cubs? Um, most certainly. Uh, I'm going to just duck quickly. Uh, often, yeah, the lines are just to the left of us. You can just see that's just a roof that we have on. Sorry, David, I'm going to get to your question now. You can see the eyes as well every now and then from the zebra. We've parked on a horrible angle. I do apologize for just straightening out the camera. Uh, they will, and it might not be a reprimanding that y you and I would know when you would discipline a child. Uh, it often ends up in growling, sometimes even swatting at the youngsters, or even just exposing their teeth. And and I think I think they got too excited, these little ones. They were left in the drainage line, but they've also been sleeping for most of the day. So they've got all this pent-up energy. And you know what young children are like? They bounce off the walls when you try to put them to bed. And that's exactly what happens here. They don't want to do what's told. Now sit down in the grass, little ones, because a zebra are going to spot you. Now it's not over just yet for these lionesses. They could still use the wind and of course the rumbling of the thunder and the pitch black of the night to move around in a better position for uh, an opportunity to hunt. The zebra are just out of view. They're just sort of at the edge of where the light ends. They're not very far. I'm gonna put my spotlight on again. I wanna have a look. There are so many of them. I'm also scanning for that other lioness because I wonder if she hasn't gone around. Hmm. Where on earth did you go? Like I said, there were two adult lionesses here, so I don't know where she's disappeared. Can you see her? No, I can't see her. I don't know where she's gone. She completely disappeared in this long grass, and we can scan and scan and scan, but I think she's actually moved off completely. Uh, I've spoken about the various hunting techniques of lions before, and it's one that we see the lions doing uh, quite a bit of in South Africa. And obviously, like I said, we're in Kenya now, uh, in the Mara Triangle, and one lion, if it's a big pride of lions, will normally go around and try and chase the prey towards another lion sitting in the grass just waiting. That Maybe that's going to happen, but that'll be a little bit dangerous tonight, especially with those cubs now being out in the open and completely exposed. That would not be a very good idea. The hooves of a zebra, of a buffalo, could quite easily trample those cubs to death, and that would be really, really sad. We would not want that to happen, but it, that's what nature is about, of course. It's not always good news for the little ones. Sometimes the prey end up winning, and I've been seeing a lot of that recently. Now, Jack, you're wondering how long will the cubs stay with their parents? Jack, it actually depends on the sex of the lion. So if it is a female lion, she'll probably stay within the pride for the rest of her life. However, in this area, we do see a lot of lions breaking away from, from main prides and forming sort of little sub-prides. Uh, if you're a boy, if you're a male lion, then typically you, when you get to the ages of about two two and a half years old, the big resident males are going to not tolerate you like they did when you were younger, and then the process of being pushed out starts. So anywhere from about two to three years old, uh, they'll start going off and searching. Well, it's actually, it's very tough life for young males once they leave uh, their pride. Um, they aren't big enough and strong enough to take on the other males in the area. So they sort of have to live in between the territories of the big of the big males and they become nomadic. It's a very tough life for them. A lot of males don't make it to adulthood. Now, Karen, you're wondering if where she's disappeared. David, you're wondering if the lionesses would reprimand the cubs? Um, most certainly. Uh, I'm going to just duck. Of I'm going to have to use my spotlight just to shine a little bit. I'm not shining on the lions. I don't want to put my big brights on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn us so that we're behind the lions and that we'll be able to see the zebras just behind them. I'm also going to scan for this lioness. Now a question from David. You want